Hiya. Have you no shame, Roy, making the old folk graft on their silver wedding? Oh, we're not making up, force. It's a day like any other, love. Yeah, well, I'm really sorry it's only a card, Mum, but happy anniversary. Oh. Oh, thanks, love. I'll open it later when my hands are. I hope you got breakfast in bed this morning. Well, not so I notice. Roy! Oh, I forgot dinner. We'll make it up to you tonight, then. How do you mean? Oh, well, you're going to come with us and celebrate. If we club together, we might be able to run to a couple of shandies. Well, actually, love, we uh, thought about staying in and having an early night. Did we? Oh, well, you can forget that, cos our day's picking you up at seven. Now, oh, well, Roy, why don't you choose today to have your annual bath? See you later. See you. Oh, well, not again. Pack it in! It's me first day at work and I haven't had a wink of sleep all night. Small price to pay, son. When your dad's a rock star, He'll be taking you along on all them fancy world tours. Will you, Dad? No, oh, I need someone to carry me kit. Your band's rubbish anyway. You won't make it past Emmerdale Village Hall. Ah, oh, they all started somewhere. Even Elvis probably had some little twerp like you telling him ever going to make it. But me and him were born to rock and roll, and no Palestines like you are ever going to stand in our way. Pity! No such a nice the start of something real big. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. A huge Las Vegas welcome for Zack Dingle and the Wolfpackers. I've got to keep checking up on you because you and Chris can't communicate. And quite frankly, I haven't got much use for you. Hang on, it's not like that. There might not be much love lost between I'm them. not interested in your personal feelings, only when it affects your efficiency. Has he been stirring it behind my back? Because you know you can't trust a word he says. That's my son you're talking about. Well, you don't need reminding of how two-faced he can be at the best of times. Sometimes, Tina, I think you forget that you're an employee here, not part of the family. I'm sorry I gave you that impression. I have to count on the loyalty of my staff. Don't you ever forget that. Right. Now clear up the garden. And if you don't trust Biff to do the job, then you'll just have to do it yourself, won't you? Will you fly out for Christmas or shall I come back here? Whatever. We'll work it out near the time. I don't have to go, you know. Faye, you know I don't want to lose you. Then just say the word and I'll stay. I can't. Wouldn't it be fair to you? What are you talking about? Ever since we came here, you've been saying how claustrophobic you feel, how provincial it is. Well, this is your big chance. New York. It's what you've always wanted. But I wanted it for us. I've always imagined us being there together. I can't match cells off a of Faye. Can't get anywhere near it. This isn't about money. It's about you and me. Our future. New York's exactly right for you now. Personally and professionally. So what you really mean is it's over between us. Is that right? I just don't want to hold you back. I don't want you turning around to me in five years saying I stood in the way of your career. When it comes down to what I want, you really haven't got a clue, have you, Steve? An hour and a half late, hardly the most auspicious of beginnings, wouldn't you say? I'm not at my best in the mornings, Eric. I usually come round about four o'clock. Well, from now on, you'll get going at 9 a.m. sharp. Or like your brother, you'll end up owing me money by the end of the week, all right? Right. Good. So, now that you've joined the ranks of the employed, what are we going to call you? How's about Butch? I don't think so. In this business, we have to try and create an impression of elegant refinement. Pollard Antiques, Butch speaking, doesn't exactly sound right to me. Real name's Francis, isn't it? Not if you want to keep your teeth. Quite. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, Eric. I don't answer phones. Really? No, and I don't make tea, neither. Nor uh, lift anything that's too heavy. I don't run errands, uh, dust, polish, decorate. Oh, and I don't work weekends, neither. So what exactly does that leave us, then? Well, anything, more or less. We're in reason. You'll get the hang of it. Come back, Sam. All is forgiven. Yes! I've just come for a look round. Ah, huh. your parents send you round a nick next week's housekeeping, have they? No, I've come to shift from your stuff, actually. We're having a bit of a dance in here tonight, so I need to make some space. What? 
Aye, I'm going to have to find out where to put that disco, though. Oh. Is this it, then? We've had some good times. We made a lot of money. I just think that now we'd both benefit from striking out on our own. And what I think doesn't come into it. Well, of course it does. You're just not seeing things very clearly. You'd be surprised. This isn't like you. I'm sure you'll thank me once you've had time to sit back and think about it. You really are an arrogant swine, aren't you? I'm just thinking about you. You're right. I am better off without you. So long, Steve. Look, Faye. Aren't you forgetting something? What? The car keys. Not much use where you're going. Don't worry, I've ordered a taxi. It's on its way. So long! Oh, as I said to myself when I met you, now there's a punctual man if ever I saw one. Oh, thanks, Freddy. <laughs> Welcome to our humble cottage. Faye, be and on behalf off. of Seth and well, Mr. Name, I'd like to wish you, you a peaceful and pleasant stay while about. you're here in Edmonton. More respect for the flaming car than you've got for me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Did you really think I'd take them with me? I don't know. Woman scorned and all that. Here you are. Whoops! The airport. As I was saying, peace and quiet. Uh, just the thing for a thinking man like yourself. Step this way, please. Frank? What is it, Tina? Can't you see I'm busy? Well, it's about this morning. I just wondered. Yes? Well, I'm a bit confused, actually. What about? I know this quarry's putting you under pressure, Frank, but we're on the same side. I thought you trusted me. I did. Well, what's changed, Frank? I haven't done anything to let you down. Honest. Is that a fact? Well, I'd swear on it. Then how do you explain Dave Glover's highly unwelcome presence at the hospital, barely moments after my wife went into labour? Well, you don't think I tipped him off? Frank, it wasn't me. Oh, come on, Tina. Give me credit for some intelligence. I do. And I wouldn't do anything disloyal. I owe you too much for that. Get out of here, Tina. Before I say something, we might both regret. Uh, just listen, Frank. You only have to take a look around to see who's most threatened by Kim's new baby. Whose only reason for living is to get the lion's share of your will and make everybody as miserable as he is. We blame Christopher for everything that goes wrong around here, do we? Well, he's certainly the first place I'd look. Not this time. This is family business, and there are levels to which even Chris wouldn't stoop. Oh, I wouldn't bet on that, Frank. Get on with your work. And Tina, if I can prove what I suspect, you'll be out of here before you know what's hit you. So, <laughs> Steve. Motor's be repossessed, has it? Phase parting shot. I'll tell you over lunch. <laughs> she didn't take it too well, did she? No, nope. but who can blame her? I'm a hard man to leave. I owe you one, Sal. Aye, two gin and tonics, please. If she ever finds out, you put me up to this. Two weeks of shopping on Fifth Avenue. She'll forget I ever existed. It's me who's getting the best of the deal. Faye's outstanding. I'm amazed you wanted to get rid of her. Well, I'll put it this way. There's another candidate who's impressed me with her qualifications. I might have guessed. But thanks for clearing the way. I'll return the favour sometime. You already have. Here's the fate. Bon voyage. They're acting like they're not even bothered about celebrating so Biff and I can put money towards the wedding. Mm. Quite right, too. You're both coming, aren't you? I can't wait to see the look on Mum's face. Of course we're coming. We can't stay very long. Oh. We've got another party in Leeds tomorrow. Oh, can't remember the last quiet night we had in. Zoe, we can either do this in private or in front of your little harem, whichever you prefer. Do what, Kim? I'm putting you out of business, having you struck from the register. What on earth are you talking about? I'm talking about the negligent destruction of my horse. Negligent? Kim, Valentine had equine pneumonia. He was in distress and there was nothing could be done to save him. Because by the time you came up with the correct diagnosis, it was too late. Now, any half-decent vet would have seen it earlier and treated it before it got out of hand. That might be true, Kim. Zoe. But I acted as I saw fit. And if that wasn't good enough, 
then I am sorry. Well, that sounds like a pretty clear admission of malpractice to me. I'm gonna sue you, Zoe. Take you for every penny. You better find yourself another job, Linda. Because this place won't be around for much longer. making such an irrational decision. I've never been more rational in my life. Apart from the emotional attachment, Valentine was a very valuable horse. I'll need adequate compensation. She had Frank's permission to destroy the horse. And he had no legal right to give it. I'm looking forward to dragging your colourful reputation through the mire. You can't win, Kim. Zoe doesn't make mistakes. Really? I'd have thought you're living proof that's not the case. See you in court. You've got the hang of it by now, Maestro. It's all right for you, mate. You've only got to learn a few words. You know, the thing I'm not too sure about, though, is uh, when do I do my big drum solo? You, you don't. don't. I think we're uh, sounding really good. Yeah, until Elvis there starts singing and ruins it all. Your guitar playing would sound a lot better if you turned your amp off. Come on, lads. We're all in a bit. We should be rehearsing. All right, then. Let's take it from the top, boys. Hey, I meant to say that. Right, one, two... Whoa, whoa, whoa. One. Hold it, hold it. You've had your turn now. I need to sound check my disco. Hey, I'll tell you where you can shove your speakers, son. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. I think tonight's going to be a very entertaining evening after all. Zoe, you know what she's like. She's just striking out at anything that might indirectly damage me. Dad, if Kim sues me for negligence, the surgery will shut down. In the eyes of the law, I am guilty until proven innocent. She won't let it get that far. She just wants to provoke a reaction. No, she was obsessed with that horse and she just can't accept that she's lost it. She wants her pound of flesh. Humour her and I promise you it'll all blow over. Oh, what is the matter with her? She nearly loses her child and doesn't seem to notice. And then a stupid horse dies and all of a sudden it's the end of the world. Zoe, tell me honestly. Does she have any grounds at all for a negligent suit? I did the best that I could as soon as I knew what was wrong. But? It could be argued that I missed the pneumonia when I first examined him. Whether that was bad luck or negligence, that's up to the judge. Down in one, down in one, down in one. Nice yes. one, Ray. Nice one. <laughs> Is this going to be the shape of things to come, Rachel? Ill-mannered hooligans sure. taking over the sure. pub every night? You'll learn to love them, Alan. Have you seen tonight's takers? Hey. I didn't know Mensa had started meeting here. No, I started work on the quarry. Looks like we're stuck with them. You don't have to be. What do you mean? I want you to work for me again. Well, forget that. Faye and I didn't exactly hit it off. Faye's gone. Where to? New York. And when will she be coming back? It was a one-way ticket. Oi. Hey, what on earth do you think you're doing, dressed up like a tailor's dummy? Chief of Security, Eric. I'm your new doorman. I know it's a charge. Correction. You are my chief bottle washer at no extra charge. Now, come on, get behind there and start washing. Come on. Undesirables, Eric. Shall I turf him out? We're the band, you pillock. Exactly. Francis, I won't tell you again. Now, come on. Just go and sit in the corner and try not to lower the tone. Yeah. 
Hey, you on strike or something, love? Come on, the table needs clearing to make room for some more beer. She's busy. So why don't you do her a favour and clear it away yourself? And who the hell are you? Now, uh, now what is it to be? Is that another pint? Uh, I'll just go and clear the table. You don't need this, Rachel. Oh, no, no, no. Like that. Come and work for me. It's a chance of a proper career with a half decent wage. After what you put me through? Okay. Look, if I come back to work with you, it's strictly business. Do you understand? So we're meeting Roy in the Woolpark then? Oh, he'll be there. Well, actually, love, I've uh, got you a bit of a present. I'll lift in the hall as a surprise. Oh, why? What is it? Oh, what have you done? Wait and see. Go on. Uh, sorry, door policy. I've got to give you the full body search. Touch me, Butch, and it'll be your body they'll be searching for. What's going on? <laughs> You've got a lovely place here, Mrs Eggleton. I think I'm going to feel very much at home. Now, Seth and I usually have a nice big mug of cocoa at this time of an evening. News to me. Before retiring early, would you care to join us? Uh, uh, the cocoa, I meant. Actually, I'm not much of a cocoa man myself. I've heard there's a bit of a bash down the road. I don't suppose anyone would care to join me for a nightcap. That's more like it. <laughs> Up on the mountain, way out of town, it's Saturday night, and the folks gather round. Bring a little bottle, but you hold on tight. It's a hillbilly rock and roll night. Yeah. <laughs> Are you all the same, Ma and Pa? Everybody's out in the yard. Somebody's calling out, go, can go. It's Uncle Earl on his old banjo. To the hillbilly rock. Five years. Where does it all go? I'm happy though, Sarah. I married the right man. I'm out of debt. I'm really quite good. Hey, billions! Oh, how does this big go again? Look! It's quite good, your old man. Didn't know he had it in him. Oh, you'd be surprised. He's got uh, quite a few hidden talents. Do you mean Vic? Oh, Terry. It comes down, her dress goes up, she grabs a fiddle and she pedals through the pop. Well done, Ned. Should get some sort of medal for long-term service. I was a bit of a lad before I got married. Since then, I've never looked at another woman. I didn't many can say that. Thanks for reminding me. Ned! This could be a laugh. Come on. Speech. But there are one or two things I'd like to say. Kathy, can you spare a minute? Now, Frank, can't you wait? Uh, I won't say it's Please. been easy because it hasn't. Oh, um, we've been through the mill and back, but we've managed. No thanks to some. But with the help of our friends like Jack and Sarah, I'd just like to say, well, thanks for being there. Yeah. You've seen Kathy? What I do? No. Gone outside with um, I wouldn't have got through without Jan. She's been my strength when I was going to jack it all in. I'd marry her again today if I could. I don't deserve her, but I know I'd be nothing without her. Cheers, love. Happy anniversary. Jan and Ned, 
Here's to the next 25. To my young. I just wondered if you'd like to take on the catering for James's christening. Come on, that's not why you've interrupted my evening. No. It's Kim, actually. Usually is. I'm worried about her. She seems to be rejecting the baby. So why has this got anything to do with me? I think she'd listen to you. So if you could find it in your heart to rebuild some bridges. I don't believe you, Frank. I have had quite enough of your family. Whatever Kim is going through, she has brought upon herself. And whatever your reason is for trying to drag me back into her life, I'm sorry, the answer is very definitely no. Cathy, hey, what's going on? It's all right, Sandy. Don't get excited. Cathy? Let's get back inside. Think about it. Let me know if you change your mind. You didn't tell me you were this bad. Hey, as good as my brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, gorgeous. Where well, you been all my life? Avoiding people like you. I was only being neighbourly. Yeah, well, sorry, pal. She's spoken for. Who is she now? And who says so? Look, I don't want to spoil a really good party. Well, I do. I don't remember seeing your name on the guest list, pal. Such as yesterday, walk out of here now, while you still can. OK, mate. Don't need to get excited. Come on, lads. How good you were, Butch. I know. It's bad luck. Shouldn't have happened on my break. Hello, Emmerdale. <laughs> right, uh, before the wolf pack is uh, slow things down a bit, I'd like to introduce my band. What? Hey, hang on a bit. It's mine. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. On guitar, if you can call it that. Vic Slowhand Windsor. On drums, Jack the Quack Dingle. And on the fiddle, we've hey. got a lovely Lisa. Yeah, well, I'm good. Yeah, boy. Oh, you yeah. shove up. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we'll be now on call. The Woolpackers have left the building. Yeah, your mum's face for a picture. I think she really enjoyed herself. Yeah, her word's happy on our silver wedding. <laughs> hey, lads, look who it is. Night. Not so fast. What's he got that I haven't? Well, manners for a start. Oh, fancy yourself, dear. He reckons he's hard, lads. Come on, Biff, leave it. Biff? Now, that's a really stupid name. Look, leave it out, will you? I don't want any more trouble. No? What about you? Come on. I'll show you what it's like with a real man. Come on, Biff. Night, night, Biff. I'll be seeing you again. <laughs> Biff! Get off him, you pig! Oi, <laughs> off him! <laughs> Fancy a bit here. Come on, how are you now, eh? Come on, have a go. <laughs> You've had him, haven't he now? Come on. 